Hi, welcome back to my iOS app and Python with KB tutorial. In this part three, I will be designing this home page layout. I'll actually get some of these pictures in there and get the, the actual like sizes of things in there. And then these little banners, that's gonna take a little bit longer, that's gonna be a bit harder. So I'll, I'll save that one for another video. But for now, let's get this blue background and we'll get the images in here and the, the button functionality is working. Uh, just right away off the, off the bat, I'm thinking that if we divide the screen up into, into parts, right, I'm gonna have one part, it's gonna be a little row for these two guys, whoops, a row for these guys. Maybe that'll be a 10th of the screen. This row will be maybe a 20th of the screen, of the screen, uh, cause this middle icon needs to be bigger and those guys will be half the size of the row. So they're the same as these ones. And then maybe we'll have a 10% for this guy and then a 20% for this row down here. I think that leaves 50% in the middle. So right, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, Okay, maybe 40% in here, something like that. Okay, so let's get to it. Here we are back in the code. Uh, so this will be my home screen, screen, right? So we don't need this button here anymore because remember what we have right now is this guy. Okay, so we want this guy, oops, this one to look like that. Uh, and to make it look like a phone, I'll just shrink the screen, okay? So between the two videos, part two and part three, this one, I, I got all the icons downloaded in here. So all the icons I think I want for my app are in here in this icons folder that I made. So home screen. First thing, we need a float layout. Okay, because we're gonna be uh, specifying the sizes of everything. So the float layout, we'll first need a grid layout for the top row. So this grid layout will be this row here for these two. Okay, so when we're using float layouts, we need to specify a position hint. So I'll say top, and then I'll be at the max height of the whole screen. Uh, and then left will be one. Okay, and then size hint. This one goes width and then height. So the width will be the full screen. The height will be 0.1, like I said, so a tenth of the screen. Okay, so then I'll need to put two uh, weather icons here. So that's for later. Now I need another grid layout. And I'll just go ahead and copy these guys. Except this one will be at 0.9, right? Because 0.9 is gonna be one minus 0.1. And the size hint will be one and 0.2, because we want this one to be 20% of the height of the entire screen. And then stay all the way left because we're taking up the whole width anyway. Okay, so this one needs the two weather icons and the avatar icon. All right, oh, and by the way, for these grid layouts, you have to specify either columns or rows. So uh, I only want one row when I'm putting in widgets here. So rows one. Okay, another grid layout. This will be for, <clears throat> um, I guess, this guy. Yeah, we'll have this guy be a separate thing. And actually, that won't need to be a grid layout. We'll just have that be a normal label. So label, and then uh, let's get the size and position hints in here as well. So top will be 0.7, right? Because we have one minus the 0.2 and also minus the 0.1. So top is 0.7. Size hint, uh, sure, take up a tenth, that's fine. We'll have this say uh, 12 day streak for now. And then actually we'll give this one an ID because we'll wanna be uh, changing the text here. So we'll say streak label. That'll be later when, we, when we're actually loading in data from the Firebase database, we'll get the streaks from the database, and then we'll reference this guy by his ID and set his text equal to whatever the actual streak is. Okay, so now we need another grid layout. This grid layout will be for the whole banners here, all these banners. Um, 
So this one is going to be pos hint will be at point six, and then size hint uh, four. Okay, so forty percent of the screen for him, and also this one will have one column. Okay, so it'll have one column, and then we'll have a grid layout for each one of these actual banners. So that'll be a little bit later because that's going to be a bit more complicated. Okay, and then we need another grid layout. And this will have one row. And we'll get the hints in here. It's going to be point 0.2, size hint point 0.2, which will reach the bottom. Oops, point 0.2. Uh, and this will be for add three uh, menu buttons here. Okay. And this one is for the banner grid. All right, let's just be a little bit more consistent and get all the comments in the same spot. Okay, that's a street comment. Label. Oops. Okay. And then last but not least. Okay. So we've got this going on, um, but there's nothing in any of our grids yet. So this guy, this top grid, again with the two weather icons. Let's go ahead and put in my two images and let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to use image and then I believe it's source. And then I need to go into my icons folder, which is here. And uh, sun, sunrise, that sounds right. Let's see, 002-sunrise.png. Okay, and let's do another one. And this one will be sun sun just sun perfect and now this one will have this one needs to be these two guys and also this bigger uh, avatar icon for now we'll just have them be the same size so let's get three images in there the first one will be the oops sorry first one will be sunset second one will be Avatar. Third one will be um, where is it? Crescent Moon. 007. Nice. Crescent Moon. Dot PNG. Okay, I realize that this is supposed to be three, and Sun is supposed to be one. Okay. And then this guy's supposed to be my avatar. So let's just have him. Uh, Man.png sounds good. Let's see what this looks like. Will I get errors? I will not. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we've got to start, right? They're kind of massive, but it's going to work out. 12 day streak. There's our label. All right. So we got the top half. And right now everything's black. So I'll go ahead and uh, get some colors in here. So using the grid layouts canvas, so in the KB language you do this canvas, and then you give it a color. And I'm going to use uh, something from Kibi. Let's see, import. So I'm using the Kibi.utils package, and I'm calling it utils. So this is kind of like from Kibi, Kibi I guess, from Kibi.utils, import this as utils. Okay. So utils will let me make some colors. So in my canvas for this grid layout, I'll get a color, utils.getColor from hex. Now I can enter a hex code in here. And I got a couple colors figured out. So this one will be my blue color. So let's see what that looks like. Um, and then also you need so color and then rectangle oh sorry so here for this color you need to have RGB and then rectangle size will be self dot size and pause will be self dot pause pose pause not totally sure uh, so self dot size 
is going to be the size of this this grid layout. So my rectangle will have this color, and it'll be the same size as this grid layout parent. Okay. So let's see if that works. There we go. We got a nice blue color in the background. Okay, perfect. Um, let's go ahead and do the same for all the rest of them. So I'll just go ahead and copy that because I want the same color for all my grids. And I could put it here in this float layout, but look what happens if I do that. So if I try to just make the color go in the float, oh, it works. Uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and do that. Sometimes you over, sometimes you start to like overwrite things. Like if I want a different color here, like that. So you can you get the idea. Okay, so I guess we don't need them all in our grids, which is nice because you don't have to paste the code all the time. So there is my background. I've got my two top rows in there. Now I'm gonna skip, like I said the banner grid and I'll just go down here to the three bottom menu buttons and these ones are actually gonna have features if you click them right so the first all these guys are just pictures they're just to look nice but down here these are menu buttons so I want them to actually do something when they press so I'm gonna do something uh, pretty pretty neat which is to make uh, an image that's clickable. So I'll call it an image button. And to do this, you need to inherit from kivi.uix.button import button behavior, okay? This will give you access to features like on click, on release, or sorry, on press, on release, that type of stuff. So uh, my, this widget here, this image button widget, will, be, will act like a button and an image, okay. So this this gives me access to the like on release function, which I want to use for my image, which isn't there with the normal image widget. And then also we need to get the image widget. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now I have an image button class, which I can use in here. So image button, and now source. I can give it a source because it's an image. So this will be icons slash, uh, let's see. Oh, I, I think I missed these ones. Well, I'll, I'll show you what I'm getting at. I'll do an add friends button, add friend.png, okay? And then because it inherits the button behavior, I can do on release and then I will, eventually this will change screens, right? But I'll just do print uh, released add friend button. Okay. So let's do the same because we're going to need three of these. Right. Um, we'll call this one football release football button. So I'm just doing this so that you can see how it works and then behind the scenes I'll go through and actually fix this up to get the right images in there and uh, so you don't have to watch me do all that tedious work. And this one will do ice hockey. Oops. Okay, released ice hockey button. So let's see if it works. All right, there are my three buttons. I clicked it, you can see down here it works. Release add friend button. Okay. Here, release football button, soccer button, I don't know. Ice hockey button, bam. So there we go. We've got our basic setup that kind of look kind of looks like here. I'll tweak the sizes and stuff like that, but I don't think you guys need to see that. Uh, maybe I'll show it briefly. And then what you can do, I like doing is always giving feedback when you click things. So I could do something like, say I want to make this a darker image when you click it, and then when you release it, it goes back. So it gives you some some feedback, right? Some like uh, touch feedback. 
So maybe I could say on press here. Again, this on press is inherited from the button behavior that I got right here. Okay. So on press, maybe I'll change the source to icon slash uh, boy.png. So when I press the button, it'll turn into this picture. Or, I mean, so it's going to be a completely different picture, but what I might do is make it a little bit darker version of the ice hockey. So I'd have like ice hockey 2. And then on release, we'll put the source back to icon slash ice hockey dot png. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's not happy. What's wrong? Invalid syntax. Oh, I think I have to do equals after for like a function. There we go. All right. So if I click this guy, no, not happy. What's wrong here? Self dot source maybe. There it is. Self dot source. Okay. So you, when you when you reference the, the attribute inside of a function, you need to have self.source and then equals. So there you go. You can see when I click it, it changes pictures. And when I release it, it changes pictures back. But be careful because if I click it and then I move my mouse somewhere else and release it over there, there's no on release uh, function event that happened here. So it'll stay. So if I click it again and release it, there you go. Okay, so that's a little bit of fun with buttons and getting this main uh, this main part going. All right, thanks for tuning in.